So if you've just bought an Insta360 camera but you're struggling on how to edit the footage, stick around because in today's video we're going to be talking about how to edit Insta360 videos. Let's go. Start. If you guys are new to the channel, we do a lot of tech reviews, unboxings, a lot of camera stuff. So if you guys are into that kind of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's get into how to edit these 360 videos on the Insta360 app. Now we're going to take this kind of step by step. So first things first, obviously you got to actually shoot a video. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hop on the one wheel, we're going to shoot some footage. I'm going to be in 360 mode, 5.7K, 30 frames per second, uh, which is pretty standard for the Insta360 ONE X2. This is the setting that they're going to tell you to do in a lot of cases, especially if you're running through like all the themes on the app. This is the setting that most people are going to probably jump to, especially because it's the highest resolution. So, so we're going to go ahead, take this party outside, and hop on the one wheel, and then uh, shoot a little, quick little clip for you. <laughs> So you can see we're already in 360 mode. Down here we are at 5.7K at 24. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna change it to 5.7K at 30 because most people are probably gonna shoot straight to that. Highest resolution, highest frame rate, all that stuff. Now that we got the camera all set up, I'm gonna hop on the one wheel real quick and get a quick little clip so we can edit this video. <laughs> First things first, you're going to want to obviously power up your camera. So after you're done recording it, you turned it off or whatever, you want to start to editing, start to edit, start to editing. Then you want to power up the camera. Then you're going to want to, I'm going to throw actually here, make a little space. Right here is going to be screen recording of this here. All right, we're going to open up the app. We're going to turn the camera on. And then it's going to ask you essentially if you want to connect to the camera or if you want to wake it up or all that different type of stuff. It's probably going to connect to it automatically. If this, if this is the first time that you've actually connected the camera to it, so right now it's asking me to join. If it's the first time you've connected the camera to your phone, then it's going to go through all the steps. It'll, it's a really easy setup process. Basically the same thing as it does here automatically. It's just you have to click through all the stuff and agree to it and all that. So now we're on the home screen here, which I don't know why I'm showing you the phone because the screenshot's right there. We're connected to the phone. I'm going to go ahead and on the bottom left, I'm going to click album. So then I can see all my clips that are on the SD card right now. So at the top you can see all which shows you the stuff that is downloaded to your device as well as the stuff that's on your camera on the SD card. And then if you click local, that's the stuff that's only downloaded to your phone. And if you click camera, that's the stuff that's only on the SD card. So if you want to find yourself quickly, that's one way of doing it. So obviously it's gonna be the top clip here. We're gonna click into it. So it's automatically gonna start playing like this, okay? So basically when the camera records in 360 mode, it's recording everything. Um, so then when you go into editing mode, you're going to have to basically tell it what you want it to do. So in this case, I have a clip of me getting on the one wheel, riding the one wheel. So there's a couple of different shots that I want to get. One being I want to actually see my feet stepping out of the one wheel. And then I want, as soon as I take off, I want to be seeing me on the one wheel riding it. So to get that shot, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to scrub all the way to the front of the clip. I'm going to get the one wheel in the clip. I'm going to hit the plus bu button, that yellow plus button that's on the timeline. And then I'm going to go to deep track because I'm, I, I want the one wheel to be the subject right now. Drag over the one wheel so it starts tracking, hit start tracking. Now it's going to start tracking the one wheel, okay? Now, well, I remember when I started recording this, I actually, the first time I got on the one wheel, I, <laughs> I, fell, I fell off it because it didn't, it didn't start going. It didn't level me out, so I might have to edit that out later. But soon is right here. As soon as I start taking off, boom. Okay, so now I have that entire section tracked from the start of the clip. You see the one wheel. And now until the point of me getting on it and actually riding it, you see the one wheel in the frame the entire time. So now what you can do is obviously for a certain point in time, I'm gonna want myself tracked. So I'm gonna reposition the frame, go to the end of that little part where we track the one wheel. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit the plus button, I hit deep track, and then I'm going to hold it on my on myself. I'm going to drag over myself. That way it detects me as a subject, and then I'm going to start tracking. So this is one of the cool features about this app is that with all the AI that's built into it, it has auto subject tracking. So you literally, it, it's, it makes it so much easier for you when you during the editing process. All right, now we got everything tracked. We got the one wheel tracked. We got myself tracked the entire clip. 
And now from here, you can go ahead and do the rest of the stuff that you wanted to do. So say we want to, so right now the aspect ratio is nine by 16. Say you're not going to TikTok, you're not going to Instagram. Say I want to put this on YouTube. I'm going to go down here, change the aspect ratio, 16 by nine. So everything's still going to be tracked. So it, which is really, really nice. You don't have to go back and restart. You can change all that stuff after you've already tracked. And so let's go ahead and let's watch this clip back. <laughs> All right, pretty cool stuff, you get the idea. So it tracked me through the entire clip. I can script through this entire clip here and I am in the center, which here's one, actually I wanna show you guys this little, this little swoop. Boom, and that at that point right there where I took the camera and I flipped it behind me, I actually had to re, uh, restart the tracking. So when I flipped it back behind me, for whatever reason, I don't know if I just, just got out of frame or something, but the AI lost me as a subject and it stopped automatically and then I had to restart the tracking, not all the way, just from that point. So from that point where I turned the camera to my back, I had to reposition the frame and reselect myself as a subject and then start tracking the rest of the clip. But then from then on, it was fine after that. So let's, let's go ahead and scrub to the end here. Right here at the end, you can see right there, boom, I, you get the little, little bit of me turning the camera off. So say I want to edit that whole section out, right? Right to that point. So right there where I start reaching up for the camera, boom, I want to trim the rest of that out. So I'm at the bottom left here, I'm going to select trim and I can go ahead and actually trim out that little bit there. So if I hold this arrow, I can trim right up to this point here. And that's about good. So hit the check mark. And now I want to go to the end of the clip. All you see is me turn the one wheel off. Just like that. So now we have one entire clip edited from start to finish using the deep track feature. So say you didn't want to do deep track. Say you wanted to do something else with the clip. You had another, you had something else in mind. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to delete. We're going to delete all the, all the tracking here. I'm gonna click on the yellow region, hit the trash can button after I've selected it. Delete all of our precious work. Okay, so now we just have a clip that is just floating in space essentially. So now when I click that little plus sign at the bottom on the timeline, I have a whole bunch of different features I can do. I can choose viewfinder, which viewfinder is a feature where you're essentially, you are your own camera person. So with the viewfinder, I can actually I can actually edit the footage in real time while the video is playing. So I'll show you right here. As an example, I can reframe this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign, hit viewfinder. And so now when I move my phone, it actually moves the frame. And so and then when I hold down this record button, it's actually recording this as a live edit. I can zoom in and out, and go to little planet mode, zoom way, way in, and wherever I move the camera is where the camera is actually going to be pointing in the edit. So if I want to just track myself the entire time, I can use this feature as well instead of the deep track feature, which is a pretty cool feature, um, especially if you're doing like unboxings and stuff. I've actually used this feature for unboxings, which is pretty cool. All right, so we got that little little bit. I'm going to hit the check mark. I'm not going to do that the entire clip because this is going to be an annoying clip to try to do that with, but just let's just watch back that little bit that we that we did using the viewfinder feature. And the cool thing about this feature too is that even though like when you're actually doing the edit, it feels a little jittery and it looks a little jittery on the app, it smooths all that stuff out for you. So after it exports the video and it actually makes it applies all the keyframes for you after you've already made the camera movements using the viewfinder it smooths all the keyframes out. So it's one smooth motion, so it's not all shaky, like somebody's holding a shaky camera. All right, so say we didn't want to do viewfinder, say we wanted to do field of view function. So we're gonna go ahead, hit the plus sign, hit field of view, and this, basically, all we're doing is manually setting keyframes. Every time I move the frame at this point, it's going to update that keyframe for this, to, to be pointing in that direction during the edit. And you're gonna to have to do that every single time you want the camera movement to be changed. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna use field of view, we're gonna manually set some of these keyframes. I'm gonna scrub through until I'm out of frame and then set the keyframe there. So then when we scrub back, I'm always in the shot. So let's go ahead and let's watch back this clip. 
from those manual keyframes we we made using the field of view. So you get the idea. Field of view is essentially just using manual keyframes to to set yourself to move the camera wherever you want instead of using deep track and instead of using the viewfinder function where you kind of work like a virtual camera. It's doing everything manual, setting manual keyframes so that you can get the camera exactly where you want it, when you want it. And if the deep track function or any other editing function on here doesn't work for you, you can always resort to the field of view function just for um, so you can really dial in uh, your look. And I don't usually use the field of view just because the deep track is so good and it's so much faster. Typically when I'm recording myself using the Insta360, I'm always, usually I wanna be, I wanna be the subject as, <laughs> as bad as that sounds. Usually I'm recording myself, so I'm gonna deep track myself for the remainder of the clip. And then anytime after that, I can use field of view to kind of whip over to something else or whip back to myself. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I use it. Uh, the field of view function can be, you can, you can edit pretty quick with the field of view function. The only thing is in between those keyframes, unless you're really dialing in, you're not going to be like dead center of frame. And that's the thing I like about deep track is that it usually keeps that subject that is tracking like dead center of frame, the entire clip that is tracking it. So that's the reason why I use deep track, but field of view is also a good function. Like I said, it's more of like a manual keyframe function. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually trim this trim this clip up quite a bit just to a, a tiny little section um, just so I can go ahead and show you guys how to export this video pretty quick so I'm only gonna do like a minute two minute clip here so I trimmed it down to like a two minute clip I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna use the deep track function because that's my favorite I'm going to get her over to me deep track and now I'm gonna track myself for the entire clip and then we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna show you guys how to actually export this video all right, so now we get the entire clip tracked. I'm gonna hit the button on the top right. It's like the share button. It shows a little square with the arrow. Share button, and then we get a bunch of different options. So for it's gonna show us resolution, so it's gonna give us like an auto resolution. So right now it's showing 1920 by 1080 for and at 30 frames per second. Then you can turn on color plus, which is like, like their vivid color or whatever. Like it's supposed to, I don't know. I think it's supposed to like give you like an HDR effect and then remove grain just in case you're shooting like towards the nighttime. Um, or in areas with low light, you can remove that grain or remove as, as much grain as you can possibly get out of the out of the video. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and hit custom and you can choose a custom resolution. You can choose a custom frame rate. You can choose a custom bit rate, which is gonna give you more or less quality. And then you can use the, you can also select color plus, remove grain and all those different types of things. And then once you've selected um, what your option is, what, what your resolution is and all that different type of stuff, you can go ahead and click export and it's going to go ahead and render out the video and export it to your phone or whatever device you're using to edit. All right, so there it is, guys. Quick little video on how to edit your Insta360 videos. If this video helped you at all, please consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you like, share, and comment on the video. I answer all the comments. So if you guys have any questions at all, please make sure you put them down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.